and welcome on into the show. This is Low Country Money Talk. I'm Jessa Jeremiah here with our expert at the desk for some questions. We have a lot to talk about. Phil Boyd is joining us. He's with Revolutionary Financial Group. Nice to see you. Good to be here. Thanks, Jessa. Well, I'm glad you're here because I've been out in the community a little bit talking to folks that are a little bit nervous, to say the least, about all the things that are going on. Sure. We're going to spend today's episode really kind of walking you through some of the things you can do, what you should be taking a look at, but we can't help but kick it off with some current events, just kind of paint the picture of what's happening sure. right now. Right. And right now is the same pretty much as last time. Uh, we still have a conflict in, in uh, Russia, Ukraine, all that's going on. Uh, oil prices came down a bit, but went right back up. Uh, I don't know if we noticed that at the pump at all. We still haven't got into driving season. Uh, the market's still volatile. We had a few good days this week, uh, which gives us some opportunities, opportunities to rearrange or take a look at some stuff. Uh, but basically, we're kind of in this same old circle. Yes, we are. One of the things uh, folks are talking about also is we are starting to see those record low interest rates start to creep up. Mm -hmm. So wondering what that's going to mean for the housing market this summer and sure. folks who are looking to literally make right. a move. So the Federal Reserve came out and they raised the interest rates uh, 25 basis points. For us regular folks, that's a quarter of a percent, right? And then we listened to Chairman Powell for a bit, you know, if you weren't confused enough. You would have been after you listened to that. So, uh, yeah, he's looking for a GDP of 2.8% uh, by the end of the year. Last year, we finished up over 5%, so that's a big drop off. Absolutely. I think the first quarter, we're right around, I don't know, half a percent or so, so that's not looking too good. The estimates for last year were seven, but we ended at five, so I don't know about that 2.8, because as the energy prices spike, typically it slows down the economy. Right. Not like we're going at warp speed now. We're not. And right. And are we looking at a potential recession? You know, there's a lot to really consider, sure. especially if you are retired or, you know, getting close to that retirement age. Then we start looking at, you know, what's happening with the stock market volatility and mm -hmm. looking back at the last couple of days where we do actually see some positive movement. Right. Is it time to do something about well, that? Well, you know, if it's been hurting you a little bit internally to see the volatility, you know, I did write some numbers down so we can take a look at the Dow Industrial uh, Index 30 companies. It's down uh, through the, today about 5%. Uh, the s and is down about uh, seven and a half, and the NASDAQ's down almost 13%. Mm. And that's with a couple of really big upticks. Right. So, you know, if you apply that to your portfolio and you're, you're down more than that, then maybe there's an issue there. And a lot of times, I think, Jessa, this is the biggest problem we might have. As people, we, we become complacent. We like to hear optimism, you know, we want good news. So we have a couple of really good days in the market, and then we're like, oh, it's okay, and I'll go back and take my nap. Right. Is it time to take a nap, or is it time to maybe well, reassess? I think we should reassess because, you know, we, we always talk about dollar cost averaging in the market, but we don't talk about dollar cost averaging out of the market. So if I'm overly uh, uh, invest or overly aggressive at my age, you know, I'm retired, I'm not saving any more money, it's got to last me, I may want to start on these big upticks, you know, maybe pulling back a little bit. So sure. it's a great time to, to review your holdings and see if maybe you're a little too aggressive. Yeah, and that really is a big question for folks right now who are in retirement. In fact, when, when we're uh, out in the parking lot, I was just on the phone with somebody asking me that exact question. I said, well, let me get the answer from Phil. I'm about to talk to him on the show. So there are a lot of questions being asked and folks who are retired have a lot of stress right now. So the good news is we're going to walk you through a little bit about what the process might look like. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Phil, obviously, and his team are experts at handling all kinds of issues, yeah. especially with what's going on right now. So people want to know what that looks like. We're going to do that after the break, if okay. that's okay with Sounds you. Sounds great. All right. We'll be back with more Low Country Money Talk. Stick with us. All right.
Hey, thanks for sticking with us here on Low Country Money Talk. We are, just to recap you, really talking about the market and what is going on with expert Phil Floyd, who's here. And you're back. You stuck with us. Yes. I thought about leaving, but hey, <laughs> you know, it's a nice day out. It is. It's great. But you know what? We have questions for you in the studio we sure. need answers to. So we talked a little bit about what's happening and there's a lot to talk about. So we tried to keep it short, kind of recap what's happening in the market. And of course, with uh, gas prices and inflation and interest rates going up, which all really boils down to a lot of retirees spending some time maybe worrying about sure. their financial assets and, and what they should do about it. The good news is what we're gonna do today and during the rest of our episode is sort of walk through what it might look like to really start diving in with you, with your team, and what a meeting would look like so that you can really get an assessment and figure out if you're doing the right things or if you need to make some moves. Okay, great, Jess. So we have a lot of people moving to the area, obviously, right? Retirees, that's kind of what we do. So for 30 years, I've been working with retirees and, you know, some of their children along the way and this and that, but mainly retirees. So over that 30 year period, there's a lot of things that have happened. You know, we had 9-11, we had the mortgage crisis, you know, all these things, uh, COVID, you know, we have, uh, now we have another crisis. Yeah. You know? So you. all these things. So uh, we've developed strategies and plans over that 30 years, of course, uh, to change as things have changed in the world. But people moving here, they may say, well, you know, uh, I want an advisor that's closer or, you know, we've experienced a little bit more downside than I thought and it seems like my portfolio is pulling back more than I had expected or now that I'm retired I'm not saving any more money Mm -hmm. so this has to last me I think a lot of people are forgetting that back part or that last point so you know I'm just gonna tell you how we do things you know Mm -hmm. and other advisors in the area may be similar and you may have been and talk to them and okay that's fine but I can only tell you the way we do that. okay so walk us through it what does sure. maybe meeting one look like okay so a person would come in meeting one you know they might be a little hesitant not understanding you know what they're what should I look for I'm nervous and that, that's all fine and, and dandy so uh, we ask you to bring certain things into meeting one so that we can start preparing an assessment but a lot of times people will move from there and say, oh, well, I'm uh, interviewing new advisors and, you know, and they'll come in with a list and I'm like, oh yeah, you got that on the internet, right? But it's all good. So uh, I, I want you to bring, and Rachel, you know, when she talks to you, she'll say, these are the things you need to bring. So you want to bring a financial statement. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I got this spreadsheet, you know, I did. I'm like, oh, I'm so, I love your spreadsheet, but I need your statement from your financial firm because the statement will tell me everything that I need to know. Mm -hmm. We look at these statements every day. Uh, Your spreadsheet with your formulas and what you like, you know, I don't Mm -hmm. know all of that. Yeah, it's good Uh, for their planning, obviously, but you need to really dive in and see exactly what's on those statements. Bring your statement. We we do that for a couple of things. That statement is going to tell us the fees that you're paying. Uh, they're going to give us the ticker symbols so that we can do research uh, on your holdings. Yeah. Uh, they're going to tell us whether your account is an IRA, traditional, rollover, a Roth IRA, a joint account, a transfer on, the, you know, whatever. So all of these things I can see with your statement, but not on your spreadsheet. Right. And you might put the symbols, but it's not the same. So we're going to ask you to bring that. A lot of times people say, well, you know, I think I'm paying too much in taxes and and maybe my investment holdings are causing some of that. Hmm. And I'm like, well, let's see the evidence. And they're like, what do you mean? Your tax return, of course. Uh Uh, Another reason for that is I may want to see if you have any losses to carry forward from previous sales on stock that's going to show in your uh, tax return. So again, your tax return is going to show me a lot and tell me a lot about you. But if you show up to the doctor and you're like, I'm here, and the doctor says, you're here. I mean, why are you here? Right. Well, these statements, you know, well, you'll say, well, I'm thinking I'm paying too much in taxes. I'm like, the first thing I'm going to say is let me see your tax return. Oh, go. I didn't bring it. 
And it's like, oh, I went to the doctor's office and my back's killing me, but I'm not going to tell the doctor my back's killing me. Right. Uh, estate plan is another thing. So you might have some questions in that. So we want to see your trust documents and all these things. Okay, so we got some homework to do, but that's good. We need to make sure our, we've got everything in order. There's one more, at least one more thing you need to bring with you, and that's your teaser to stick around for after the break, because we're going to show that with you next. All right, we're back on the other side of the break here on Low Country Money Talk, and we have really had a lot of talk about money because there's a lot to talk about. Phil Boyd is here, of course, with Revolutionary Financial Group, walking us through some of the current events that are happening here mm -hmm. and, of course, abroad, and how that might affect you. And good news is, Phil, you're sharing with us some information on really how we can take steps mm -hmm. to making sure our financial picture is as healthy as it can be. Right. It's important. So you, we're finishing up on the first meeting still. So you came in, you brought these documents we mentioned before. What else was it we were supposed to bring? Yeah, so we mentioned three things. I gave you a nice little teaser if you were watching <laughs> us prior to the break. We've talked about bringing in your statements because you really need to see a clear mm -hmm. picture of everything that's on there. Your tax returns, of course, because taxes are a big picture of your financial plan. And then your estate documents. But you might be surprised to find out there's one more thing. And what is that one Probably more thing? Probably the most important thing is bring your spouse your spouse yeah. don't forget that yeah. important so let's sure. walk us through why that's so important well what i found over 30 years you know a, a lot of the uh men you know they have the john wayne i'm gonna leave the impression oh out. but he's so good <laughs> <laughs> but well, they want the john wayne tough approach i got this i've got a system i track this every day i got a spreadsheet okay all of this stuff uh, many times the spouse has no idea how their system is, doesn't want to know how their system is, just wants to make sure that they have enough money to last them. So what I say is we definitely need to bring the spouse in to lower uh, the stress because whether she shares it with you or not, she probably does, but why should she live her whole retirement worried about money and what happens to you? Because generally the male dies first and that's gonna leave her with, I don't know what he was doing, I don't know anything about his spreadsheets or anything else, that creates a lot of stress. It really can, yeah, absolutely. So that's important. So mm -hmm. as if that wouldn't be stressful enough of a life event dealing sure. with the passing of a spouse, here you are left maybe in the lurch financially mm -hmm. not understanding right. the picture at all or what to do next or even what's available, mm -hmm. what assets there are to you. And it's very comforting when a spouse has been part of this whole planning process. And we're gonna, you know, typically people are gonna forget. But then I can chime in and say, remember, we did this for this. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah I remember. Oh, that's a lot of a load to take off of you. Right. You know? So I find that to be very important and we need that. Absolutely. Yeah. And just even feeling comfortable, you know, having a go-to person to, right. you know, really discuss those financial plans and what to do next. Well, what if you don't die? What if your male spouse is laid up for five or 10 years? Then what? Right. You know, because then he's not going to be tinkering with that computer. What if he gets dementia? or right. something, okay? You don't want him playing with the computer and your finances. So all of these things in, in 30 years I've seen happen many times. So we need to develop that plan. We need these documents to come in. When we're finishing up that first meeting, I'm doing a lot of listening. And I'm like, what keeps you up at night? Uh, what are your main concerns? And I just sit back and listen. And if you listen, people will tell you a lot. That's right. Yeah, we <laughs> may have a lot to say, that's right? right? Well, yeah. that's interesting. So really what you're saying is you come in, you're, you know, you're going to do your, your little bit of back homework, gather your, your items, gather mm -hmm. your documents, right. bring your spouse. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you're listening and between the documents and what you're potential clients are saying, that's going to give you enough information right. to go on for really what step two looks sure. like. So we're gathering the data. 
uh, in the meeting one. You're telling me this is the way you want things, this is what you, the way you think you've got to where you are and all this, and I'm just taking pages of notes and listening and this and that. And we're gathering data for meeting number two. Yes, and one thing that I have learned from you in our time together, Phil, is that a lot of people have a grouping of financial products, as you put it, yeah. and that may be what some of the things mm -hmm. they're bringing to you, yeah. but not an actual retirement strategy. Right. And I'm guessing some of that comes in in the next meeting and discussions, mm -hmm. and guess what? We're gonna do that after this break. Stick with us. Welcome back in. You have made it to, can you believe it, the last segment of our show on um, Low Country Money Talk. It flies by, at yeah. least from this side of the desk, because <laughs> there's just so much to talk about. And Phil, of course, is here just really helping us navigate all of the different topics of money, specifically to your portfolio and what you need to be doing uh, if you should be doing something, really taking a look. So, mm -hmm. Phil, thanks for returning sure. with us. Thanks. Good you, to be still. You're walking us through what a meeting with you like right. looks like. And we really talked about that first meeting so far where you're gathering data, mm -hmm. you're listening to what is potentially your client, sort of interviewing sure. each other, if you will, on whether or not this is a good fit. Mm -hmm. So we've done that now, right? Right. What is our next move from there? Well, with these days of these, what do they call them, reality TV shows, I guess it's time for the reveal. The reveal. So the reveal is like we gathered all the data, we pay thousands of dollars a year uh, for these computer programs to solve these issues and bring them. So uh, now I'm going to use some of that money to bring that technology to you and say, okay, you know, this is the analysis that was done by Morningstar uh, concerning your holdings, your internal expenses and fees, your performance, which is really important. Uh, and if we have mutual funds or exchange traded funds, we undress them and it shows, okay, this is how much stock is in this fund, you know, this particular one or whatever. So now we have the full picture. Mm -hmm. And then we'll compare that to your benchmark, depending on, you know, your portfolio, what what benchmark we use. If it's just a growth, then probably we're gonna use the standard and Poor's 500 or something like that. And I'll say, this is what the benchmark's doing. This is what you're doing. Here's your internal, external fees. Usually people are a little surprised. Sticker shock maybe? To know how much they're paying. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, here's your performance. And then here's what you said that the risk allies, you know, Rachel, We'll, we'll get that together and people call in for that and she schedules them for risk allies and portfolio analysis and all that. But uh, you told me you were a risk of, you only wanted 30% at risk and uh, that matches up with the way you answered the questions. But when I look at your Morningstar report, you're 50%. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're having stress. Right. When the market's doing all this stuff. So then also I'm gonna come up and say, okay, these are my recommendations. Here, here's the strategies that we wanna to apply to your situation. So two things that can really be shocking as you go through this process that I'm hearing. One is you may be surprised to know how many fees you're paying and some of the riskier areas that you're in that maybe you thought you were less risky right. or, or whatnot might not add up to where you think you are or right. want to be. Uh, secondly, though, what you may discover in these meetings is that you may think that your portfolio is being managed, but really, is there a strategy in place? Do you have a manager? Is that manager actively taking a look at the market yeah. and making appropriate moves? Right. So on the risk side, Jess, of your portfolio, is that something we're just kind of we buy a grouping of financial product or stocks or whatever we're doing, and we're just like, oh, we'll ride out the storm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not really what I consider to be an actively managed portfolio, because even though the market's in, in a, uh, a, we'd say a downturn somewhat, there's things in the market that are doing quite well. Right. So, uh, of course, what we would want to do is we would want to shift you know, this is, we want to shift from the things that aren't doing as well, I'm not saying that we would abandon them totally, but we would want more of the things that are trending up right. in an inflationary market because there are several areas 
that are doing quite well mm -hmm. during an inflation period. So we want to manage that. And, but if we're just holding what isn't doing well, that's going to be much more difficult to increase that return. And if you're not actively really watching and taking a look at these things, you might be surprised to know that your financial advisor isn't really making these necessary moves and really managing what's there. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up for folks because we've got to, because we're out of time. So let's do that. So right now, retirements, retirees, you're under some stress. There's really four major reasons, right, that are contributing to the big picture. So we've got inflation, We've got taxes to worry about, of course. Uh, the devaluation of the dollar is something we could probably dive into even more yeah, on another episode. Right. And then we've got, of course, these fluctuating stocks. Yeah, and I mean, we could be out 70% on our retirement dollar from these things. Uh, the things that we can work on, Wall Street, if Wall Street's taking 20% 20, 20 of our retirement dollar back in a bear market, maybe we can adjust how much we have in, in exposure to that. Uh, the tax picture, there's always opportunity to save money in taxes. Uh, so these are two of the things that we should be doing. And I'm going to add in one other, and that's reducing our fees on our investments. Mm, yeah. So all of those ways we could save money uh, because our retirement dollar is being attacked right now. Absolutely. And we've got to make it last, you know, because we don't have any more going in. Right, right. So this is might be the time for you to, to stop and give them a call and talk to Rachel, get your risk assessment, get your portfolio analysis. Sure. And uh, don't forget to tune in for more Low Country yeah. Money Talk next time. Thanks, Phil. All right. Thanks. And thank you. We'll see you next time.